Hi everyone, I'm Ben and in this video we're going to be using Unreal Engine 4.26's Chaos feature to destroy a rock arch and create some falling rocks. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, so to get underway and install the 4.26 with Chaos in my Epic Games launcher, I'm going to come over to the library tab once I'm in Unreal Engine and I'm going to go and say engine versions, add a new engine version and click the drop down and 4.26 with Chaos is not at the top so I have to scroll down and grab 4.26 Chaos. I'll click install and let it do its thing. Okay, here I am in a simple scene I've set up. And what I'd like to do is create a rock bridge that's going to span these two uh, rocky outcrops and then fall down and in between them into this crevasse below. So I've got a geometry bridge and I'm going to do my meshes, drop in my bridge and move it up. And right now this is just a single static mesh and if I press play you can see nothing happens. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and convert this into a geometry collection or if I have multiple static meshes I can convert them into a geometry collection by going to modes, choosing fracture and then under generate saying new. This will prompt me to save the, and name the geometry collection so I'm going to put it into assets and I've created a folder called geometry collections. I'm happy with that name so I'm going to say create geometry collection. You'll see that the geometry collection turns white and that's because I'm seeing this debug material shown and that's uh, you know show bone material so if I want to see the base color I can jump back over here to the top level of my geometry collection and just toggle my show bone color here or press shift B on the keyboard all right cool you can see right now this explode view doesn't do anything because I've only got one item in my actual fracture level and that fracture level is down here. So that first fracture level is level zero and there is one item in that and that is just the entire mesh. So if I go and simulate this now, let's see what happens. Well, it looks to me like it's just a box rolling down this hill. It's quite a lot of offset. So it doesn't really fit the rock arch very well that I've created. I'll stop that. And with the geometry collection selected, I'm gonna come down and under my chaos physics, I'm gonna double click the icon for my geometry collection. And so here we can see that the collision type is set to implicit implicit and importantly our implicit type is using analytic volumes and in this case it's using a box which is exactly looks like what we just saw rolling down the hill. So we could use another analytic volume if that would suit our needs. In this case I want to use level set and what this is going to do is allow me to take this piece of geometry and using the min level set resolution and max level set resolution create a, a version of this mesh um, for the collision purposes of the dynamics. So I'll save this and close it and just simulate again to see how this is running. And now it looks uh, a lot better connected to the scene and we can see it rolling just about where it should be. So the actual collision volumes for these rocks on the side, they're not, um, I haven't done those manually. So you can see there's some interpenetration over here and that's looking pretty good apart from the frame rate. So if we wanted to do a quick and dirty way to increase this frame rate, we could select it and in this case come down to my geometry collection, double click it again. And we can see down here at the bottom, there is this collision particles fraction, which is the number of particles on the triangulated surface that are used for the collisions. And that, that number or that maximum collision particles is 60 here. So what I'm gonna do is say to use a, a smaller percentage of those. So rather than 100% or one, I'll say, use 0.3 or 30 percent say save close this and simulate again and now we're getting a much better frame rate okay let's let the destruction commence so what i'm going to do now to destroy this is with it selected i'm going to come over to my fracture and we've got a number of voronoi fracture options here and so i want to use this clustered voronoi fracture so i'm going to click clustered and we've got the, the settings that we can dial in here to get the look that we're after. I'm very happy with the default. So I can't click fracture. I just need to choose which piece I want to fracture. So I can either click on it over here in case there's only one piece, or I can click on it here. So I'll activate it. We can see the preview of the Voronoi cells. I'm just gonna say fracture. And all of a sudden we've got a new fracture level. So this is our first fracture level. And then we've got our second fracture level. We can see those down here. We've got our first fracture level, which is level zero with one piece, the entire piece of geometry, and the second level, level one, with, which has 40 pieces. So if I go and 
head and simulate this now we have all the pieces falling down and we're in business so one thing is i'll turn off my show bone colors and just want to have a look up here so right now we can go ahead and change the explode amount and i'm just going to select one of these rock pieces so i can see the default material and i can also press shift q and shift e right if i want to contract or expand this exploded view so shift e to explode it out a bit more and we can see that where it's made these voronoi fractures i've got this magically i've got a material applied and this material is element one over here so you can see it's just taken the material that i had on the object and duplicated it so that i have a similar material showing up here on the new fracture side so that's really nice and so you can go and obviously change that if it needs to be a different internal material but that's working well for me okay all right, I hope that helps and I'll see you in another video.